Hey everybody, just wanted to take a minute to update everybody on some new information regarding the ongoing rabbit hemorrhagic virus outbreak. As you're all aware of, unfortunately, we first saw this uh, be confirmed in New Mexico in early April, and since that time, it has spread to at least six states that I'm aware of with confirmed cases. Now, that being said, as of recently, or at least the last couple weeks, it does seem that there's been a slight slowdown in the number of confirmed cases. That is obviously a very, very good thing. But I also want to make sure that none of us are taking for granted that we know this disease has the capability of spreading and spreading very, very rapidly. So now is certainly not the time to let our guard down. Just wanted to remind everybody out there to be aware of some of the more common clinical signs that we can potentially see with this disease that we want to be aware of not only with our house rabbits, but also paying attention to those native populations that you may be observing in your community. Sudden changes in appetite or an animal that becomes very lethargic, certainly high fevers or seizure activity or any bleeding from the nose, the mouth or the rectum are all potential indications of underlying disease. Also, unfortunately, one of the more common clinical signs is just sudden death, which is obviously a horrible situation. If you see any of those clinical signs in your own animals or you observe sudden death in native species, please contact your veterinarian and the state veterinarian immediately. We continue to get a lot of really good questions about the availability of the vaccine. So I wanted to touch a little bit on that. We know there are numerous states that already have the vaccine and have actually been administering the vaccine in a vaccine clinic. And there are other states that are well down the process of getting the vaccine. If you live in one of the six states where there have been confirmed disease, I would strongly suggest that you communicate with your veterinarian about the availability of that vaccination to determine if that is appropriate for your pet. The other question that we're starting to get a little bit more of, is there a risk of this affecting my other pets, my dogs, my cats, my guinea pigs? This is a great question. Unfortunately, there has been no research that has shown that this virus has the potential of affecting other species other than rabbits. Another question that we've been getting a fair amount and I wanted to touch base on is looking at the potential of the greens that you're feeding your rabbit potentially carrying the virus. And this is a great question. First and foremost, I would suggest that you reach out to the manufacturer of whatever source of greens you're buying and ask them where those greens are grown. If we can identify and make sure that they're not grown in areas where the virus has been identified, certainly the risk is really low. Another easy way to protect yourself is to buy greens that are locally grown or potentially try to source those greens that have been grown hydroponically. So to summarize today, it's important that we all stay aware of most current information and we will continue to share that with you. I would also suggest that you check out the House Rabbit Society's website where they have a plethora of information that they continue to update every single day. In the meantime, continue to be smart. If you live in an area where there is confirmed disease, take all of those additional precautions that we have talked about to socially isolate your bunny from other bunnies, keeping them indoors, taking those extra precautions with your clothing, with your shoes, and doing everything you can to decrease the likelihood of them being exposed.